All right, 632, we'll go ahead and call the meeting to order. Um, next agenda item is public comments. We've got 15 minutes. If there's anybody that wants to contribute to the meeting. Can you hear me? Yeah. Gary Dean, you know me. Um, I just had a couple, and I apologize to Dr. Morris because normally I would just email him these questions, <clears throat> but I'm going to just ask and maybe he can answer it during his principal's report. Maybe we can talk later about it, but um, there was just some comments that were made around my dinner table this evening with my daughters and some of their friends, so I just was hoping for some clarification. Um, first of all, I don't need any clarification on this. I understand the gates went in today. Um, for the bathrooms. I'm just kind of wondering what our goal is with those gates To I understand we're having a vaping issue, which I kind of wish we'd gone for the sensors right away instead of the gates. But anyways, that's my personal opinion. Um, I'm just wondering what our objective is. Are we putting these gates there for to prevent kids from going into vape? Or are we preventing, because it's, it's getting less and less bathrooms that these kids are able to use. Um, second thing is the doors being locked in the cafeteria and students not being able to come and go from the cafeteria during those lunch periods. I mean, I, I have children that have periods, blocks open. Some of them, they spend their lunch at school, some do not. So I'm just kind of wondering what the theory is behind locking the doors to the bathroom. I mean, I'm sorry, to the, to the lunchroom. That's all, thank you. Thank you, and that's all we have in attendance, so we will move forward. Agenda review. Anybody have any additions, corrections, notes on the agenda? Good. Okay. Um, so we have a couple of sets of minutes that we can take up. Um, it's up to you guys. If there are no corrections, we can take them as a group. Otherwise, I'll take a motion on one or the other. approve previous minutes uh, December 6th and December 20th. A second? I'll second it. Any other discussion, corrections? Okay, and all in favor of approving the minutes of December 6th and December 20th, 2022, please say aye. 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 Any opposed or abstentions? Fantastic. That brings us to board reports, and we have our student senate representative today. Um. So yeah, I'm just going to be discussing some of the stuff that we're currently doing in the senate. Um. So basically, what we've been doing recently is the uh, student senate broke off into committees to ad address certain things when it comes to like, um, winter carnival, which is our like main event. Um, during the winter, which allows kids to like kind of have fun after like a long um, period of time doing like academics in school. So um, the first committee our our um, uh, Senate broke up into is the gym activities committee. So the objective of this committee is to ultimately like select a fun yet appropriate um, sort of events that will um, be held during winter carnival. And currently they are um, just circulating ideas throughout the um, committee and then choosing um, which activities they think would be most appropriate. Um, another committee that we have is the Mr. PA committee. So the, the objective of this committee is to find an adequate alternative to a historic um, male beauty pageant here at PA. But um, the, 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 our new like revision of this is the students um, participating will be judged on factors such as Spartan attire, personal interview and an act of their choice. This way students will be judged on factors that are within their control rather than something like looks or something like that. Um, and then in order to be inclusive, boys will, will participate in the pageant and girls will be their coaches. And then people who identify like, um, like something that is alternative, they can choose whichever form of participation they'd like um, if they get chosen to represent their grade. Um, and then currently the Mr. PA committee is partic or is participating um sorting out a potential date for the event um and they will begin to communicate with class offices so they can then um advertise it to the grades um and then another committee we have is a fundraiser committee um so the uh, objective of this committee is to find potential sponsors for our t-shirts um so the committee has asked all of our members to look for potential sponsors to help fund our t-shirts 
Um, so in return, the company will probably be featured on the back of the shirts or something like that. So yeah, we just kind of broke up into uh, committees to make it more manageable to be able to attack all these things. And we, we will probably just um, farther do these in, um, until um, February, which is our winter carnival. So that's basically what we've been doing as of late. Um, obviously, like since we had the long break, we haven't seen as much, but yeah, we had a meeting today. We kind of continue to go over those. So yeah, that's what we're doing. Awesome. Thanks. Any questions? Great. Thanks again for coming. Um, we don't have Mr. Coughlin tonight. Is there anything? Here it is. Yep. Sure. No, no worries. <clears throat> So Mr. Coughlin said, good morning. PHS has passed their annual code compliance check from our local authorities. The New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services has removed our conditional approval tag on our five-year wood chip boiler inspection and has officially granted us our five-year approval. The new dishwasher has been installed in the PA kitchen. Over the holiday break, we had Honeywell in for some minor HVAC fixes and Armor Electric in for some minor electrical upgrades. Our crew was busy over break working on various tasks such as changing HVAC and HEPA filters, washing and waxing floors, deep cleaning bathrooms, supporting athletics um, such as the hosted holiday tournament on 1228 at PA, high, uh, high dusting the buildings throughout and general repairs throughout to name a few of the tasks. Some of the crew also used this time to take off and regroup as we head into the new year. Please let me know if you have any questions. Thank you, Josh. All right. Um, Gene, anything on SAU or exec? All right. Um, anything more for Hill School? Uh, nope. And the next meeting is January 17th at 4. And then they'll be coming here for our meeting for a presentation. Awesome. Um, and NBC, we haven't met since the last time this board met. Um, we meet again on Thursday night at 630 uh, at Town Hall. So hopefully we can finish up what we need to tonight so that we can take them somewhat finalized information. Uh, they did have their budget binders um, delivered to Town Hall Thursday before Christmas. Um, so it's been a week and a half that they've surely been pouring over those. Um, nothing on consent agenda or gifts and donations. Um, so we have budget talk. I'm sorry. Oh, I skipped the principles. Oh, you guys to that went right over it and they weren't going to say anything. <laughs> uh, thanks, Sandy. Yeah. Um, I feel like we haven't started with Dr. Morris in a while, so we'll start there. I try to spread the love. Okay, good evening. Uh, so our sending school presentation on December 12th went very well. Uh, I would say a rough estimate, we probably had uh, around 50% of our incoming student body attend with their parents. Uh, we had upperclassmen from the National Honor Society, Key Club, and the Pembroke Academy Student Senate who came to facilitate tours of the building. Uh, and I think that they were really helpful in um, just kind of providing a student perspective if they were asked and kind of informally walking uh, guests through the building. Uh, are any of our sending school students and families are invited to a varsity double header on January 16th and they were given vouchers that night. Uh, we have our, we're finalizing our NEASC report and we will be sharing that with staff next week and then staff will have uh, a week to go over it. We'll have a Q&A session uh, for them the following week and then uh, we'll have the committee will have a week or so to um, take that feedback, adjust some things and then ultimately the the staff will have to vote on the on the report and whether or not uh, they find it to be an accurate representation. Uh, I did want to just highlight some of the efforts of some of the staff members who have been a part of this. On our NIAS steering committee, Amy Parkinson, Jeannie Johnson, Kristen Doyle, 
Janelle Landry and Kelly Menzoir have spent a lot of time already on this and will obviously be spending a lot more when we are preparing for our collaborative conference visit in early April. Additionally, we had some uh, subcommittee chairs that helped with the helped facilitate the writing and do a lot of revisions uh, and editing for each of the sections of the report. And uh, those chairs, those subcommittee chairs were Crystal Williams, Kim Bates, Tracy Bride, Kareen Moore, Sally Johnson, and Matt Dion. And we had a uh, an accelerated timeline for them, and they really did a great job. And uh, a lot of staff were willing to help them, uh, and that was that was great. Uh, also, just want to highlight that we had our winter concert on December 15th. That went very well. Um, and I uh, just want to highlight the efforts of Scott Thibodeau and Colleen McDonald, our two band and chorus teachers who put a lot of time and effort into that. And uh, I think the strength of that program and the fact that it continues to grow illustrates that. And then in terms of gates, uh, the gates were installed in all but the gym lobby bathrooms and I'll get to that in a moment, uh, over break, uh, and are being used in the basement bathrooms to close those off and the third floor for the girls' bathroom right now. Uh, the reason for that is we had some vandalism. The reason for the gates in general, as I mentioned back in December, is uh, we have vandalism that has become an issue. We have vaping that's become an issue. We have students that hang out in bathrooms and that's become an issue. And so the primary goal is to have those gates and to be able to use them when there's vandalism uh, that represents either a safety issue or uh, represents um, you know, an issue like graffiti that's offensive that we need to you know, block access to until that can get taken care of. Um, for instance, I think I had mentioned back in December that uh, we had students that got into an electrical junction box and opened that up and we obviously can't you know, continue to have access to a bathroom when that uh, is going on until that gets fixed. Uh, and before we were using duct tape and not only is that not an effective means to block egress, but is kind of an eyesore. Not to say that I love the gates either, but it's better than, you know, half a roll of duct tape. Additionally, you know, with the vaping, a lot of it comes down to supervision and we don't have enough, particularly during passing times, we don't have enough supervision to watch all of the bathrooms all the time. So uh, administrators are going to all of the, these different bathrooms during the passing time, monitoring those, um, but we can't get to every single one of them, so we do the best we can. Um, but ultimately, you know, we'll open one up. If another one needs to close for um, vaping or vandalism, we'll, we'll do that. Uh, in terms of doors being, no doors are being locked uh, in the cafeteria, they're closed. Uh, and that's during lunches to prevent students from accessing parts of the building that they shouldn't be accessing during lunches. So um, it's not a new rule, it's just we're trying to enforce it with greater fidelity because we have a lot of students that are roaming the building and that has generated a lot of work for us in terms of supervision of other bathrooms and other areas that are, um, you know, we just don't have the manpower to do that when we're also trying to supervise the lunchroom. And so we have close to 800 students. We have three lunches. We have students that go to CRTC. So it's not an even split, but there are a lot of kids in the cafeteria. Uh, and in order to close those doors and have staff at those doors allows us to check passes to make sure students have passes to go where they need to go. Uh, and if not, then we um, get them to go back to their academic labs or their uh, open campuses. Those are primarily the students that are kind of roaming around. If students need to access the Southern Wing to um, meet with teachers, that's fine. They just need to plan ahead and get a pass to do that. Um, or I guess, you know, theoretically, a teacher could meet them in the cafeteria and escort them. We do have some teachers that do that. So um, not a new rule, just uh, trying to be a little bit more overt in enforcing it because we have had issues uh, most recently uh, with kids roaming. So. Thank you. Any questions for Dr. Morris? Oh, 
All right. We'll hear what's happening at TRS. <clears throat> Well, not a lot happening today, so that was good. We came we came back. Uh, we're at ninety one percent, which is a good thing. Um, so I think our lowest we hit was eighty seven percent. But I overall, I don't know what the illness is. I mean, it's unbelievable. This is smorgasbord of things going on right now, and uh, we're just trying to keep our head above water. So we felt pretty good about today. We'll see what by the end of the week is. But it's been significant, <clears throat> as I'm sure you've either read or heard. Uh, but uh, we're we're still doing pretty well. Uh, we did start some star assessments today. Those are some, you know, we do it three times a year. Uh, so this week we will do this and maybe a little bit of next week to just to get another data point as to where we are as a school. Uh, and we use that to um, really dr drive instruction um, and to uh, see what we can do to support students. And believe it or not, SAS are coming. I just got, I have to, had to sign off on a, I don't know what it was, okay to test something today. Um, it's like, it's hard to believe it's coming, but that obviously comes in the spring, but it does take significant amount of planning. Uh, in our building, we do the whole whole building, so it takes a while to plan that. So we are, uh, hang on, it's coming. Um, right before break, we also had done some more work with Thoughtful Classroom, and we had uh, spent some time with staff talking about what a learning goal looks like and where it should be posted in the room versus what an agenda looks like. Um, so we have, uh, we're spending time, what does a learning goal for that class look like versus what, you know, what are the actual things you're going to do to get to that learning goal? I think there's been some, I don't know if confusion, but used interchangeably as far as this is what you're going to do, but this is actually what we want you to learn. And on, on top of this is what we want you to learn, uh, how do you know that students have learned it? And so those are some of the things we've been focusing on and continue to do so uh, this month. We do uh, January 25th, we have our seventh and eighth grade concert coming up. We did sp uh, split them this year, the sheer numbers are uh, really pretty, pretty amazing. Uh, <clears throat> so seventh and eighth grade will be the 25th and the first of, uh, uh, February will be our fifth and sixth grade concert. We still have in excess of 120 kids in band. And I forget how many in course, 75, 80 in chorus. So when you have 320 kids in the building, we're, we're busting at the seams, which is a really good problem to have. Yeah, that, that's about it. I think everything else is, we're a good place. Excellent. Questions for John? All right, last but not least. Um, so Hill School, same thing, like the day after vacation, you can imagine, is always interesting. Um, but it was quiet today, so we'll take that. We'll see what tomorrow brings. Um, but with that, whenever we come back from break, one of the first things we do in classrooms as a teacher, or even in the building, is just reviewing rules, routines, procedures. It's you got to kind of pretend like it's the beginning of the school again and um, go over all of those. So you'll, we would see a lot of that going on in our building right now. Um, prior to break, we had um, another data meeting. You'll probably hear me talk a lot about our data meetings. It's something this year that's a big focus for us is to really look at um, student progress and what that means and kind of, and really starting to target areas of need or specific skills or, you know, students and things like that. The data allows us to dig deeper um, and kind of use our resources a little bit more intentionally. Um, so what we did at that data meeting, we're actually going to have a total of four this year. We typically have three. But when you look at the schedule, it was too big of a gap between our first one and the next one, which will be about uh, the beginning of March. We wanted a, a, to put another one in there. We call it a progress monitor. Um, so we met as a data team we looked at student progress based on the data that we have we did have an additional star assessment and then the goal of that was really to look at student we call it growth like what is this expected growth for our students um and then having very intentional conversations around rate of growth for students and what we can do to support students and then also looking at if you see students with significant growth, what's going like, what's going well for them? What are the things in place for them that are allowing them access to that? So that's kind of the conversations we're having right now. Um, looking kind of forward to the future, 
um, you hit January and all of a sudden for us, it's thinking about kindergarten registration and getting all of that set up and going. So that will release at the end of February and we're gonna schedule additional information nights for parents. One of our big goals is to get out, to get, reach out to parents as much as possible to really share with them um, information about what they can do over the summer or things like that to help the kids when they come in because there's quite a bit that can be done in preparation that will just kind of get them like a little bit, you know, of that, um, the success when they walk in the door. So just being able to share what are some of the skills, like can you zip up a jacket, you know, using scissors, things like that, they don't seem um, like they're a big deal, but in kindergarten, they're a big deal. So that's one of our goals. Um, another one is, as John said, SAS is around the corner. We got to have to sign off on our test assurances uh, coming up. And then, so we only test third and fourth grade. They've already been practicing um, SAS with writing, and we've seen a it's huge growth just by being that, in, you'll hear us that word intentional, just bringing our practices back. So we've seen huge growth with that already. Um, so instruction, we put in handwriting without tears because we noticed handwriting was something we needed to work on. And then word study. So we call it word study, it's spelling, but it's also kind of phonics in between because it's all about patterns and words. So that kind of combination has shown pretty good growth with our kids. We're really excited about it. Um, the last thing is our UA team who are phenomenal, have been working really hard. Um, they, we just had our winter concert, which was huge. It was amazing. They were able to raise about $300 to be able to purchase an instrument there. They've banded together as a team to support our, oh, I didn't realize the pun was there, our band program. They, they want to support the band program because Miss Rose is very excited to bring it back. So they're working as hard as they can as a team to put in all of these opportunities to fundraise to support her and that program right now. So they have a variety show that they're gonna do in February with the goal of funding instruments for students. Um, and it's it's been just, that's been a really awesome thing to watch. So I think that's pretty much it for us. Thank you, questions? Great, and now we will move on like we're supposed to. Oh, I did want to, um, a quick thank you to Dr. Morris and the others if I happen to miss it, but I saw the email, um, the reminder regarding illness and keeping kids home when they're sick, and I, I thought it was appropriate and well-written, so. Okay, yeah, so, yeah, we can skip. We're on number 8A, um, so. I guess if you've got, if you want to lead in and let us know where we're at. Yes, I will. Um, so Amber, as she historically has done, highlighted in yellow any of the cells that she made a change to. I did give her your sheet um, to make the cuts from the cut list. And she also made a couple of changes. We didn't do a summary because it's they were mostly from the spreadsheet. But there was a small change in teacher salaries. I think someone moved a step um, and it was not reflected on the roster. So that was adjusted a few thousand dollars. And then there was another, I think, maybe $3,000 adjustment in the custodial section, I think, in the rosters again. So a couple of things, she looked at them one more time and found a couple of things. Other than that, it was all the cuts that you made from the cut sheet. Um, and I'm not sure what your what your plan of attack is tonight. We do need to go each, through each of the Warren articles and the budget is the first Warren article. Um, but when I sat with the principals this morning, we had our, our leadership meeting and I went over the cut sheet and the changes that you had recommended at the last meeting. And we were just hoping to have a couple of conversations um, th from them, alternative ways they had found to fund some things that you may wanna think about. And then um, Dan wanted to speak about the vape sensors if you don't mind uh, sure. letting them have have a minute to do that. So I don't know where that's appropriate. I don't know if you want to talk about the bottom line and then decide where <laughs> where you want to go from there, or if you want to have them just yeah, let, let's give you a little something. If everybody's okay, let's, let's talk about the country first and get opinions, if I can find the darn thing. There we go. <clears throat> can... Can I suggest that we sort of integrate in that conversation the input from the administrators, though? That would be helpful yeah, that for me. Okay. Yeah. I think that's the main. 
I think um, part of the conversation this morning when we reviewed the cuts that the board made, um, some of it was just information I didn't have that they have that they can share with you. And some of it, I think, Wendy, I don't know if you want to start, but Wendy had noticed something that was cut that to her, would there was something else that would have been a more of a priority. So just asking the board, hey, if you're going to make that cut, can we switch these two items? Something similar to that, if that's sure. Do you want to start? <laughs> Nope. Okay. Um, so just for me, the one that um, I wanted to kind of take a look at was um, the suggestion not to cut the rugs, the replacement furniture line for that. Um, that 4500 for me, I just think one of our priorities that I'd like to consider is just shifting that as far as using it for um, math supplies and then our physical education supplies would be my kind of my priorities. We do have rugs that can get us through. So for me, it's just being able to shift it from that particular um, item to more of the actual instructional items. Do you, can you tell me, what, do you have the spreadsheet in front of you? Yes, I do. Can you align it? I'm, I'm, um, is... Oh, the, I have the cut sheet. <clears throat> Yep. So the two lines I'd like to prioritize oh, definitely. Okay, the math's one yeah. PE. Okay. Um, we have a great opportunity. We have a new PE teacher who's really done some amazing work with social emotional, and she wants to do a lot of work with team sports. That's made a giant difference in our building. So for me, if the kids are available to learn, we get a lot more learning in. So ha her having access to those materials helps the academics in the long run. And then the second shift for us would be. Um, really, the mathematics supplies. We're doing a lot of work around math this year, in particular. Okay. Um, can I ask a clarifying question? I should have asked before we started. <clears throat> the dollar amounts that we discussed from last time for this sheet are they back in the budget? Has this been updated with the sheet that we had looked at? And I put hashtags next to the things I called them things and not to cut. Okay. And she cut everything else and updated this updated the sheet in the drive. Okay, so the the percentages and the and the bottom lines that we're looking at here are accurate at least to dollar amounts, if not correct. Okay. Yep, and to, to all clarify. the lines, she put them in all the lines okay. where they were on the cut sheet. Okay, so discussion around um, Wendy's question. I mean, I guess to start the conversation, I'm always in favor of letting administration make those decisions. They, I'm not a teacher. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't necessarily object but I just need logistical help. So I'm looking at a document that was in our drive called 12 2022 Pembroke School District Potential 23-24 Budget Cuts. Yes. Is that the right document? Yes. Yep. So I don't see a line item for rugs for 4,500. Just help me, help me out. It is in replacement furniture and fixtures. So in the Purple Hill School section, third from the bottom. So I have, I, that's why I asked the question yeah. because I'm not seeing that either. I have the third from the bottom for me is infrastructure. So I don't know if we're looking at the same thing. Hmm. Oh, that's interesting. Um, <clears throat> oh, there is a second tab that is titled original 12, yes, 6, 22. And, it was. And, and that does have a, a third to bottom line with a line item 4,500. Yes. Thank you. Because it's been cut. Yeah. It, okay. were, so there were so an, there were things that I called them Andy's things not to be cut. I know it's it was a board vote, but I, I had this little note, Andy, don't cut, and I put slashes next to them. Okay, that makes sense. That's, so it doesn't yeah, show right, up on yeah, the there's, on the there's a, Yeah, there's two tabs and one was the original and one was the one that you took action on. Yes, thank you for okay, that. So so basically what we're saying then just procedurally to close the loop on that, we'd be bringing forty five hundred back into this, but then it would come out of the, the cuts listed for the two for the math and because I think you, you kept the forty five hundred in right and and I think Wendy's proposal right. is I said to, that backwards yeah yeah is to bring back the other two things and, yeah, and to fund the and give up the rugs yeah. <laughs> over that right. so and I don't know that you I don't know that the board wants to take action on every little item right now because I think you have bigger decisions to make and you may end up doing more with this but I wanted yeah. you to at least hear. Yep. what their thoughts were. Okay. Any, any questions or comments on that specific item before we hear from you? Okay. What are the other? John, did you have any? You did. You, I think you had the intervention kit 
I think you were able to put in the grant. I know it's a small thing, but just well, it was um, yeah, it's yeah. We don't. We're finding another way to fund that. I think this goes back to some of the issues we have when we build a school budget. We have to do it in September. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you get into a couple months into it and, and you go, hey, look what we found. And we mm -hmm. need to do it another, another way. So that, this falls into that category. We and we're going to find another one. Okay. So then to clarify, that was something that the board said we were not going to cut, but it's been removed from the budget because there's other funding methods. Right. According to this sheet, I'm looking at $34.99 was cut to keep the line open with a dollar. This is the updated one from today. So it says that that's, so it looks like we're still cutting that, yes. but it's because there's alternate funding yes. available. Okay. Makes sense. Questions about that? I've got both sheets in front of me, so I'm mixing them up. Okay. Or are there items at PA other than the sensors? I mean, you can talk about the sensors now if you want. It's just, Patty may sound like that was sort of a separate thing. The items at PA we're okay on. Um, I think that um, we'll, we'll be fine. The ones that are cut, I know that we've slated some of that to be surplus spending, like the stools, and that makes sense. So, oh, that's fine. Uh, if I could transition to the vape detectors, that That'd be helpful. So, you know, as John had, had mentioned, you know, we start this in September. Uh, at that time, I had asked Josh Coughlin to do some research on vape detectors, and he came back with a $30,000 price tag. I said, okay, that's a quick conversation. Thank you. Uh, but vaping has obviously gotten a lot worse, and so that was the impetus for putting it into the budget. Uh, however, we've talked to uh, some other schools that are using them. Uh, and I'd like to tell you a little bit more about what the vape detector will do. Um, so it works similar to our camera system. All of the units are wired back to our IT closet, similar to our cameras. Uh, and if one is triggered, what that means is it will send a notification to the staff members that we have, basically administrators, you know, uh, but it's a silent notification. It's not an alarm. Uh, and a trigger would be any time there's a change with uh, conditions in the room, in a bathroom. Now, those changes could be uh, vape, smoke, loud noises. High school bathrooms can get loud. And so, um, to me, it, we, we are trying to do our best to stop vaping. <clears throat> Uh, and it's a problem because we have to shut down bathrooms, but it's also a problem because students are uncomfortable going into bathrooms that are open because there are a lot of students in there. I don't think 30000 for that service is money well spent at this time. I think if we were to wait a year, we're probably going to get a better product for less money because it's, this is, these are new to market. The fact that it's a silent alarm that um, can be triggered by anything to include loud noise does not give us the necessary impetus to escort students down to Walker House and search their backpacks. You know, my my friend uh, just yelled and that set it off. So it, it, I don't know that it's going to be the tool that we were hoping it would be for $30,000. So you started to say something about other schools. Are, I'm taking a leap. Are they getting false positives because of the noise or? So there's that. There's um, what we've heard is it's a problem everywhere, and uh, they don't help as much as you think that they would help. Okay. Um, like they're not providing you with the proper cause. Correct. The search. Okay. Yes. Yeah. You know, not only that, but the fact that they're silent, it's a double edged sword because it doesn't disrupt the learning going on in the hallway, which is great. But it's also not a deterrent in the way that it's not obvious, it's not known to other students. You know, it's um, the students that are activating that, you know, triggering that detection don't know that they've triggered that. So I just don't know that that's giving us what we want. 
I mean, there have been other schools that have hired or tried to hire people through grants to, you know, monitor access to bathroom. I have mixed feelings about that. I think, I mean, it's been hard for us to get a grant manager. I don't know, you know, how, how we'd get, you know, people to sit outside of high school bathrooms, you know, five days a week. Uh, and quite frankly, like they have to come with a certain background to be able to, you know, de-escalate an aggravated teenager who's not allowed to go into a bathroom uh, because there are six other people in there, you know? And so you, you have to have kind of a requisite background in order to do that in a way that's not gonna generate other problems. So anyway, I just wanted to put that out there because, you know, initially, I was hesitant on 30,000. Vaping became a more significant issue throughout the year, but the more we've looked into this, the more we feel like it's not going to give us what we want right now. New to market, maybe we'll get something better in a year. Questions, comments? No, that makes sense. Um, questions, comments, philosophically around kind of the entire issue of the cut sheet at the moment. Yeah, I have a quick question and then I'll give it to you. Can you hit that other tab? I'm just wondering about the money we put back in for transportation for overnight trips in the special ed case manager at PA. Is that back in the budget? It is. Yeah, so anything that's back in doesn't show up on the new version. Because, yeah, okay. <laughs> no, then it'll disrupt my access. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I said briefly before, I, you know, we're talking dollars and cents, and I'm pretty comfortable with where the, where the money is right now. But as far as the decision making on how that stuff's going to be spent, I'm more than comfortable with the professionals making those decisions. Oh, Amy, sorry. Um, I was just going to suggest that maybe um for the pembroke hill school it not be a either or and that for the 4500 bucks we keep the rugs i mean sounds like we're going to add thirty thousand dollars to the cut sheet too so if we put forty five dollars back forty five hundred back in for the rugs and whatnot we're still on the good compared to this number i'm certainly comfortable with that Not, not to make Amber make more edits. <laughs> Those are pretty easy. <clears throat> Spreadsheet, puzzled, but cut sheet is very well organized. So. Yeah, and I could be wrong, but I, I remember last year as more of just a text list, and this is very well organized. If we can sort of make this the template going forwards. Okay. Yeah, this is great. And set it up that way. Every school is on one sheet. They're color coded. They're by section. So that's great as well. I dig it. Um. Okay. Do we do we want to? I'll leave it up to you guys. Do we want to jump into bottom line, or we do we want to do other Warren articles first? If we want to do other Warren articles. We'll just take them in the current order they are, and then have a discussion about the order. Um, or we can tackle the big budget number first. Neither of them, which I'm sure it's going to be a super long discussion. Can we do the big budget number? Absolutely. <clears throat> sure. So the first warrant article um, is your budget. And right now the bottom line is 29,820,558. That is... A bottom line increase of $546,945. Um, I think the the thing that we would keep in mind is that the, the teacher increases are typically in the budget. This year they were pulled out, and that's the collective bargaining agreement uh, warrant article that's in the next uh, number three. And I'm not sure if you have this somewhere, but I just did some quick math on that. If we add in the 430 369 for the first year of the contract and if you're looking at the bottom line numbers on the on the printed budget packet um the increase not 
uh, with uh, the first increase of 1.87 percent, which is the numbers Patty was just referencing, goes to I believe 3.34 percent when we include the first year of the teacher salary. Just reference. I think Amber said something too, right? With all of that, did she send an email? Uh, I can't. Yeah. Right in front of me. Never happens. So, I think she tried to break it down for you in a similar fashion. Right. It's helpful. Is this? To this I don't remember if this was in the drive. It is. I just don't know if I need to read it to people. <laughs> I think she. You had sent her your sheet that you were using, and I think her right. it was a reply to you about right, right. I redid these numbers, and this is what I came up with type of thing. Okay, so I'll run through these somewhat slowly in case people want to jot things down. Um, so basic numbers, again, pretty much what Patty just read off the sheet. The budget appropriation number currently is 29820558 that, as it says there, is a 1.87% increase without taking the Warren article, in, I'm sorry, taking the Warren article for the transfer into consideration, otherwise a 3.52%. If the CBA passes, it makes the lower of the two numbers 3.34, which is what I got, so I guess I can still do some math, <clears throat> and it makes the higher of the two numbers 4.99%. If the CBA were to not pass and just wore an article number five, which is the $155,000 were to pass, the lower of the two numbers would be 2.40% and the higher number would be 4.05%. And then if both of those things pass the CBA as well as um, $155,000, then the lower of the two numbers is 3.87% and the higher of the two numbers is 5.52%. And I think that's the important parts of this. Yeah, there's some signatures and stuff like that. So I guess the big question is, are we all comfortable with the numbers? Um, I'll start. I'm, you know, I'm not going to say I'm comfortable with this number because I think that's an oversimplification, but I think that I am, I would vote in favor of this number because it is the number that we need to support the kind of education that our students need from the kind of educators that our students need. Others? Um, I would still like to add, so I, I'm okay with the numbers. Um, I'm My brain is not working this year, and I would like to ask Amber, and I know she's been on vacation, if she can write like a couple of sentences to describe the difference, the whole transfer to trust warrant article. Because I know I've done it in the past, I know I've understood it in the past, but I'm not... I, is that just the stuff that we returned to offset taxes last year and it's the difference between budget and that or? No, I think it's your warrant articles that you, last year you had, oh, sorry. Oh, it's last year's warrant article. So if you look at um, the transfer to trust under 5250 on the last page of the budget, yep. you had 405,000 um, and then 78.5 to the expendable trust. So those look like they bring your budget down artificially. Gotcha. So you would be plugging in your trust funds, you know, once you transfer, but it just it artificially lowers that number. It makes you think, oh, our budget's down, but it's just because those transferred to the trusts are taken out of that. Okay. That makes sense. Yes. Thank you. Um, Okay, I mean, I guess if nobody has any other comments or anything, we can go into the Warren articles. But if you think of something about this, don't be afraid to jump in. We can go back. Crunch time. If you're comfortable with the numbers, 
then do you, if you're not going to do anything further with the cut sheet, then does someone want to make a motion to approve what the I was, principles? I was going to, already thinking that? I was going to wait until you're done until we go through the other ones, just in case there's, I don't expect any changes in the other ones, but that could sure. adjust how people feel about those numbers, I suppose. Um, sure. Current article number three, shall the Pembroke School District vote to approve the cost items set forth in the collective bargaining agreement reached between the Pembroke School Board and the Pembroke Education Association for the 23-24, 24-25, 25-26, and 26-27 fiscal years, which calls for the following estimate, estimated increases in salaries and benefits at the current staffing level. The first year is 430369 Second year is 445528 third year is 495010 and the fourth year is 447897 and then to further raise and appropriate the sum for the first year which is the 430369 so i don't think there's a lot of conversation around this one we already i was just going to ask did the um teachers ratify this yes any other questions comments do you want to take your vote on it while we're here you voted to ratify the contract, yeah, but we didn't we, do the Warner. We can. Then the budget committee has your. So again, these are, there's technically an opportunity to change or retake this vote. I, I kind of would like to, if it's not ridiculous while Stacy's here, just so that we have five votes on the paper, but so that we can take our intentions to the NBC, uh, take votes tonight. And if we feel like we want to revisit, we may. Um, so. All in favor of uh, recommending Warren Article Number Three, as Patty just read, so I don't read it again. Please say aye. Aye. Any opposed or abstentions? Or you don't need a motion in a second. Yes, I do. I'm oh, sorry. I'm having a really bad I was night. Wondering here. about that. <laughs> Let's do it again. I'll move. All right, all in favor of approving warrant, warrant article number three as written, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed or abstentions? This is my first day of only having one cup of coffee. Oh. My daughter's very proud, but as you can see, there are side effects. Uh, okay, warrant article number four. Number four, we've typically had an article that says, shall the Pembroke School District, if article three is defeated, authorize the governing body to call one special meeting at its option to address number three cost items only. Um, so you don't need to vote on that. It doesn't have any funding attached to it. However, you do need to be sure that you want that on there as we do every year. Otherwise you have to <clears throat> go to the Supreme Court and get a judge to agree to a special meeting. So this sort of, Gives that approval in advance. Anybody have any issues? All right. All right. Number five, to see if the Pembroke School District will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $155,000 to be added to the school building capital reserve fund previously established. So that would be a raise and appropriate. So that's direct impact of taxes in case anybody asks. We talked about this somewhat last time. Is there anybody that has remaining questions about number five? Just procedurally, how do you want to handle these lower ones? Do you want to vote as we go, or do you want to take these later? If ever, it, it's up to you guys. I'm, I'm okay as we go, and again, we can amend votes if we need I, to. I'd like to just take them as we go. I think it's going to be a little bit quicker. Okay. I'll move to approve. Second. Any other discussion or comments? Okay. Then all in favor of recommending um, Warren Article Number 5 as written, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Hey, number six, to see if the Pembroke School District will vote to appropriate the sum of $110,000 for the purpose of floor upgrades district-wide and roof replacement at Pembroke, Pembroke Academy with said funds to come from the school building capital reserve fund previously established. So just as a reminder, this article withdraws money from that trust fund to make those upgrades. Uh, motion to approve Article 6. I'll second it. All right. Any discussion, questions, comments? All right. Then all in favor of recommending Article Number 6 as written, please say aye. 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 
Any opposed or abstentions? All and then right. you will notice that Josh was in favor of keeping the school building capital reserve um, articles together. So number seven, to see if the Pembroke School District will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $50,000 to be added to the school building capital reserve fund previously established for the purpose of continuing work on the capital improvement projects. This sum to come from the June 30th unassigned fund balance available for transfer on July 1st. So that means no amount to be raised from taxation. So it'd be a surplus funded article. So moved. Second. Questions or comments? Can I ask a quick question? Sure thing. Um, as far as like NBC goes, it's fine to put the no amount. I just worry about it's required. The, okay, that's required language. It's so close to the other one that is raising taxes. I just want to make sure yep. that they're not going to cut any language out of that one. No, that language has to be there. Um, we had an NBC person that was there forever okay. that used to really get cranky about it, but there's nothing we can do. No, 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 I, I want to make sure it's not yeah. going to go away. No, it's ultimately on me to explain those differences when okay. meeting day comes, but good point. Just want to make sure. Any others? All right, then all in favor of recommending article number seven as written, please say aye. 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 Any opposed or abstentions? <clears throat> Okay, number eight, to see if the Pembroke School District will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of up to $250,000 to be added to the Site Improvement Expendable Trust Fund previously established. This sum to come from the June 30th, 2023 unassigned fund balance available for transfer on July 1st, so no amount to be raised from taxation. Uh, I, I would like to say something before there's a motion. This one I... I would have a concern about the order only because of the size of the dollar amount. Um, if if this uses up what we have left, we're not putting anything into our vehicle trust, um, which is part of CIP, um, and same with number 10, and those are much lower dollar amounts. Um, I wonder if anybody else sees value in, in putting nine current 9 and 10 before this article. Specific. Say that again, Andy. What so, so um, well, anybody out there is listening. Um, when there's a surplus at the end of the school year, warrant articles are funded. The the no amount to be raised from taxation, the, the transfers from unassigned fund balance, are processed in the order that they're written on the warrant. Um, so, being that warrant number or article number eight is talking about two hundred fifty thousand dollars, it's a large amount. It, in my head, it's possible that that so we'll always do up to. Because if there's only $237,000 less, then that amount gets transferred. Um, but then that leaves nothing for whatever articles come after it. And the vehicle one in particular is something that's on our CIP plan. So if that doesn't get funded, it puts us in a little bit of a bind for next year. Not that 7000 is huge money. Um, but I'm just wondering if we should move the 7000 for number 9 and the 25000 for number 10 above this large item. So that if there's not 282000 left, Still get funded. Sure. Um, I would just share Josh's sentiment um, that we did ask him about flipping things around in the order of things, and he is very concerned about the track. Um, and I okay. think that that was his priority. So getting as much of that taken care of to make sure that we're set up for next year. <clears throat> Doesn't the up to language also um, mean that you could, for example, if there was two hundred and forty thousand dollars left, do you know two hundred thousand dollars for this article, and then push down that money to the next articles, right? No. No? It says up to because if you only had $240,000 mm -hmm. in surplus, it would all go toward that and nothing else would get funded. Okay. I'm, I would be nervous if you were, I can't imagine us ending with less than that. Mm -hmm. But Yeah. Okay. Uh, if If that's what Josh thinks the priority is, then I'm okay with it. In that case, I'm open for a motion unless anybody other has any other... I'll move for the passage of Article 8. eight. I'll second it. Okay, any other questions or comments on Warren Article 8? Okay, uh, then all in favor of recommending Warren Article Number 8 as written, please say aye. 
Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Sessions. Right. Okay, number nine. To see if the Pembroke School District will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of up to $7,000 to be added to the vehicle expendable trust fund previously established. This sum to come from the June 30th unassigned fund balance available for transfer on July 1st. No amount to be raised from taxation. And that's, again, that is a fairly new trust. Um, and Josh has got his capital improvement plan with his yearly contribution, hoping that by the end of life of the vehicle, there will be money to purchase a new one. So moved. Second. Questions or comments? All right. Number of recommending Warren Article Number Nine as written. Please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Hey, number 10, to see if the Pembroke School District will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of up to $25,000 to be added to the equipment installation and labor expendable trust fund previously established. This sum to come from the June 30th unassigned fund balance available for transfer July 1st, no amount to be raised from taxation. So moved. I'll second it. Questions, comments, discussion. Okay, then all in favor of recommending Warren Article Number 10 as written, please say aye. 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 Okay. Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. <clears> hey, <throat> okay, number 11, to see if the Pembroke School District will vote to appropriate the sum of $124,000 for the purpose of camera maintenance, zero turn mower, phone system at Pembroke Hill and Three Rivers School, intercom replacement district wide, with said funds to become from the equipment installation and labor expendable trust fund previously established. So a deposit and then a withdrawal. So moved. I'll second. Questions or comments? Seeing none, all in favor of recommending warrant article number 11 as written, please say aye. 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 Any opposed or abstention? Technically, that one, that one need a vote? Oh, Since yeah, we'll probably spend, not. We'll spend money. <laughs> Sorry. Well, our intent is clear. That. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> but yes. Which on that last one? Yeah, because oh, there's no. It's not a tax impact, so. Yeah. Um, number 12, to see if the Pembroke School District will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of up to $10,000 to be added to the Technology Expendable Trust Fund previously established. This sum to come from the June 30th unassigned fund balance available for transfer on July 1st, no amount to be raised from taxation. Yes. yes. <laughs> so moved. I'll second it. Questions or comments? All right, then all those in favor of recommending warrant article number 12 as written, please say aye. 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 Any opposed or abstentions? Our TV just randomly, in case see, well, people see us I, laughing, it's like, randomly like, yeah. turning on. We also didn't abstain. So Sandy, Maybe you we shouldn't decide? have the technology aye. at the very end. <laughs> she assumed it. You think? Did you unplug it? Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right, so hard reset. Oh, yes, that that's what you did. All right, rewinding. All right, back to the budget. Say that again. <laughs> um. All right. Is there a motion on uh, number two? Motion to approve Article Two. Second. The budget. The bottom. Twenty nine million eight hundred twenty thousand five five eight. Twenty nine million eight two zero five five eight. All right. Last call for questions and comments on the bottom line. And yes. is, is that with the, or is that the bottom line or is or do you are you authorizing us to make those changes from the principles? We didn't. Oh, so do you want us to wait on this or do it as amended or if it's going to be. Can you quickly, does somebody, can you grab yeah. your calculator on your so, phone? So minus. So. So minus 30 yeah, minus plus 45. 90 plus 45. And then the, was the intervention kit. 
Oh, but yeah. We, oh, yeah. I thought last time we discussed the intervention kit as being grant that. funded. We did. Did it get back oh, that kit? Maybe it did. I thought you were when you oh, yep. when you explained about the yes app. yes but it it but it's yes it's on the cut sheet yes so that's all set all right yeah thank you okay so we would be so we'd be adding in the for Wendy art math and PE so math we would be adding eight thousand five seventy five and for PE we would add two thousand one forty. For a total of 45, right? No, it's an additional 4,500. And then subtracting the 30,000, right? Yes. So you're adding back in those two items I just mentioned that were cut. 2140 and 8575? Yep. And 4,500? No, the 4,500 is already cut yes sorry or you want to add it back in right yeah. you're giving her all of it <laughs> eight thousand five seven five two thousand one forty and forty five hundred so then that's kind of and then out of minus thirty thousand from that all eight one seven twenty three so total D175, 2140 and. 8575. Oh, Seven three. Yep, that's three of us. Perfect. Twenty nine million eight oh five seven seven three. So Jean and Amy as amended. <clears throat> hey, any other questions, comments? Concerns, modifications. Seeing none, um, I, I guess I'll read this one because I don't think anybody read the whole thing through. So just to be thorough, um, or in article number two, to see if the Pembroke School District will vote to raise and appropriate the budget committee's recommended amount of twenty nine million eight hundred five thousand seven hundred seventy three dollars. Uh, is there a typo there? Is the supposed to be the next word? In, maybe? In the support? Just following along with you. Or right. after the number. I think we need the word in, maybe? Yeah. In. Or for of supportive schools. Something. Need, need, yeah, I was going to say, yeah. In. We'll use in. in. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, so I'll start over. To see if the Pembroke School District will vote to raise and appropriate the Budget Committee's recommended amount of $29,805,773 in the support of schools for the payment of salaries for the school district officials and agents and for the payment of the statutory obligations of the district. This article does not include appropriations quoted in other Warren articles. All in favor of recommending Warren article number two as amended, please say aye. Yeah, technically it still is because they they have to vote on it too, and they're the ones that bring this thing. I think I believe that's correct. Yeah. The... Yes. Yeah. Or they could change. They could change. They could change the. They number. could change the number. Um, they could make it lower. In which case, we could make a motion at the meeting to bring it back to what we wanted. And, mm -hmm. but yeah, good question. Um, so all of those in favor 
of recommending order article number two as amended. Please say aye. 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 Any opposed or abstentions? Fantastic. Any other business around budget preparation for next year? When's the um, public hearing? The date? Uh, second or the seventh? Or I think I have it on my personal calendar. I think I do. I think it's February 2nd. I think that's right. I definitely don't have it on my calendar. Pretty sure it was February 2nd, but had the seventh stuck in my head for some reason. I don't know. It's not. No, it's always it's a Thursday. It's yeah, a Thursday. well, so we have two things on the calendar, so they we must not have the date yet because it's a tentative Pub Pembroke budget hearing on the ninth, and then right. Pembroke public hearing question mark on the second. So clearly, we don't have the date yet. All right, never mind. We'll have to get that from. Yeah, I'll Thursday. double check while we're talking here and Might see. Might be on the towns. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm pretty sure yeah. the year is done, so. Yep. You know. Tom, I have it on their website, too. Yeah, I'll see. I'll look through tonight and see if I already have it somewhere, and if so, I'll send you all an email. Otherwise, I can report after the meeting on Thursday. Agenda. Okay, um, so you were going to provide a current year budget update. Oh yes, what about that part? So recognizing that it is still early in the year in terms of budgeting, um, Amber still wanted to run a report for you just to give you an idea of where you are right now, and that number is. Five hundred twenty-six thousand six seventy-one fifteen um, surplus, positive number. Can you say that one more time. I'm sorry. Yep, no problem. Uh, you have a surplus of five hundred twenty-six thousand six seventy-one and fifteen cents. Um, you know, remember it's early. Right. We have POs that still come in that we didn't know about. We'll have things that will decrease. It'll it will fluctuate, but at least you kind of have a sense of where we're at right now. Okay, um, questions about current year budget? I think there was. Do, do we get an enrollment update? I was, that's what I was just looking for. I don't see one. There was one a couple of meetings ago. I don't think she was in the folder a couple of meetings ago. Maybe um, if you or the administrators can just give us like a uh, informal anecdotal pulse, like our oh, you're how the, the numbers are. I was thinking you were talking about the the AREA enrollment update sheet that she does. I was, but in the absence of that, you know, if we could just get some sense of how the numbers are trending currently. Do you want us to go school by school? Yeah. We're pretty status quo. We're at seven seventy one right now. Uh, we kind of hover between 765 to 785 uh, you know we have some students that will end up pulling out to homeschool uh, if that becomes a more viable option as the year goes on but right now we're pretty stable for reference the budgeted number for pa is 790 so we're still well on the good side of that we're about 319 320 and that's been relatively stable this year uh, but it's actually higher than I anticipated uh, because we had had a, a very large eighth grade class of 95 come to PA. Um, and we had a, uh, what we thought was a smaller group coming from Hill School, but our number. So we were actually, when it's starting off, I thought we we're going to be under 300, but we've had significant move ins, over 30 kids move in. We are currently at 339. It, we've been around 340 all year. It fluctuates a couple here or there. Um, that's more typical of what the past and everything has been. So we've been pretty stable with that. There was like one blip here with COVID where we had a lot of kids out. But other than that, it's around 340. Sorry, I'm just getting back to the right. No alert. problem. <clears throat> 
we did not have time over the break. Um, Ashley was furiously working on budget documents to, to update the policy. So if we could hold those. That would be much appreciated. Okay with me. Does anybody have any particular concerns? Um, not really. I wrote notes and I'll save them. Okay. But you know how we were trying to figure out at the last meeting? It says first reading, but we're on the third reading. So I did double check all of them yep. side by side on Andy's fancy screen. They can all be updated. They just didn't change the title. Okay, those are all third reading. Cool. If that makes it easier. Yeah, thank you. There are some blanks that need to be filled in. Um, so, and that just didn't get done. And that, I guess I could just tell you right now and just sure. to double check with staff. Yep. Like IHBAA, do we know if Karen Gersh has looked at that? Like it looks fine. And we've incorporated everything, but it has to do with special ed. I'll make sure. And EBVD is all indoor air quality and water. Just making sure Josh Hoplin thinks it's okay. I can have him look at that. Typically, it's it's from statute, but it's always good to have our experts their eyes on them. They find things that we don't know. Okay. Yeah, yeah that's the only thing I saw. I don't know if Jean had anything else, but I did look at every single one. You know, one thing I will ask for direction, um, I think I know the answer, but there's a blank on the updated school board policy. Um, you're now required to do 30 minutes, even though you've you've always allotted 15 and 15. Did you want to keep it at 15 at the beginning and 15 at the end? I, I think for now, we can chew on that. If somebody feels differently, we can discuss again, but there was a particular ask three-ish, four years ago by a member of the public, and it was particularly so that people had a chance to respond to things that happened during the meeting, and I think that's a fair request. So that's kind of where I'm at, but if, if people have other thoughts, I'm certainly open to it. That's how your agendas have been done, so I was assuming that, but wanted to double check. And I think if we leave, you know, let's say we front load it all 30 minutes in the front, and somebody shows up late or whatever, this gives them the opportunity later on also mm -hmm. to speak, so. Okay. Fill that blank in. Cool. Um, do you have to know, do you have a rough idea, or maybe Melanie, how long um, the L LB, I can't remember their names. LBA. LBA, thank you, are, are going to, um, require at our next meeting? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think, I would think so. I think they talked about, what, a half hour, 45 minutes? Because I don't really know, the last meeting was back in what, October? Yeah. No, I don't think it's that long, but it is about their visioning center. It's a presentation about all the envisioning stuff they've done. They'll be here, but it's pretty much going to be Hill staff and the, the people on the visioning team are going to present to you guys. Oh, great. Okay. So it'll be in conjunction. They'll have a piece, but then you'll have Hill staff that is on the team as well doing it. Okay. Um, next time around. So that'll obviously be first, um, we will have to touch on any budget comments that come out of the NBC meeting or anything that Amber might have for us. Um, and then with with time remaining, um, we can hit policy and board goals. I, I think that's probably a full. Okay, Ashley emails me, I can be ready. <laughs> Very helpful to help us set it up ahead of time. Um, okay, so next agenda item then after policy is public comments. So we've got one more 15 minute block as we just discussed. <laughs> Our member of the public declines. Uh, so we'll move on to 11. Anything informational? Nope. Oh, thank you. Okay, thank you. David. Um, do we have non-public? Um, so maybe so you have you do have a retirement right. request um the the proposed cba now that it's public we can talk about all of this moved back the notification for retirement a year so this person is had to put in the c the um education association let all the teachers know hey if this contract passes you there's this opportunity to apply for a master salary in your final year, but you have to let us know in advance because the retirement option as it was is gone. Um, so this person I'm sure would like to know that 
if the contract passes, yes, you were, you know, there's only one received, so we know she will be awarded. So maybe you could just take action pending approval of the CBA that that would be approved. So I'm okay with taking action on that in 13, but if people want to discuss in non-public, we certainly can. Weren't there a couple other things in there? Like letters of requests for time off? Did I, mm -hmm. Did I miss that? No. No, okay. that was the last meeting. I think you, I wonder if you looked at last year's day. Oh, well, maybe. I'm looking for, maybe. You had a wrong date and I don't but see no, any. A bunch of stuff was in there. I can't go back and look at it right now because I can't. I, have no... I didn't think we had any staff requests in there. Yeah, I have. No, I have a bunch of stuff, agenda, the one that we're talking about, minutes, minutes, warrant. I can't even get anything to load in here. I'm okay Josh's acting on the um, retirement request. Budget. What? I'm okay acting on the retirement request without a non public. That's what we saw last week, right? Yes. Or two weeks ago, whatever. Yeah. Same. Okay. Um, so it sounds like we do not have need to go into non public. Sorry, I lost my agenda now. Okay. So then, agenda item number 13 appointments, resignations, and retirements. So I'll make a motion to um, approve the retirement request uh, conditional on the CBA being approved. Is there a second? I'll second it. I'm assuming since we're not in non public, there's not any discussion. Um, so, all in favor of um, approving the retirement request pending the passage of the collective bargaining agreement, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. Um, our next meeting, as we mentioned, is scheduled for January 17th, 6 30. There's a municipal budget committee meeting, 6 30 this Thursday. Um, and we mentioned a couple others in the minutes. Uh, SAU. January 11th, is that right? Exact board, yep. Um, I think that's it. Is the, um, that January 11th one, is that a all hands on deck or just the exact? Okay. It's exact. Thank you. You're welcome to come. Yeah. Thank you so much. The more the merrier. Uh, okay. Um, if there's nothing else, then I will accept a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All right. All, all in favor of adjournment 749 p.m. Please say aye. 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 Thanks, everybody. That's a, that's a quick one. I do that all the time. <laughs>